The idea of an alien invasion has appeared many times in science fiction, from H.G. Wells in The War of the Worlds to Independence Day. These scenarios tend to resonate with audiences because of the idea of a full loss of our world to an alien influence, and the result of the potential extinction or enslavement that come from it are some of the spookiest ideas in the genre. Perhaps the most terrifying possibility is this scenario. Say you rise to the point of civilization and science, essentially where we are right now, and you discover that there is someone already out there in your star system with you, close, that you hadn't seen before. Not likely, but can't be ruled out right now. And say they have been there possibly since the beginning, and you see that they are watching us, but not doing anything else, merely watchers of unknown origin. Perhaps occasionally they toy with you, and you accidentally detect them sometimes. But when you do, they are so advanced that you think they are behaving irrationally, and you dismiss them as either something not real, or something other than what they really are. You could call that the close take of the zoo hypothesis. While most scenarios of this type are fun and scary, but not particularly realistic, they aren't impossible. But space is enormous, beyond that, and very difficult to travel. At the same time, it's arguable that planets like Earth aren't likely to be rare. This basic situation we are in has no reason to be uncommon, assuming stars the size of the Sun and smaller can host surface life like ours. So why would aliens come here when in fact, when we look out, we see only real estate that no one has taken advantage of? Very, very limited, though our view of that is right now. Therein lies a question. We are now just at the point that we can see exoplanets. Even when I was graduating high school in the early 90s, there were still no known confirmed exoplanets that would come a short time later. Now we know of thousands, but the thing is, we only have a few details on any of them, and those we do have something on tend to be the very largest of worlds in most cases, not likely to be useful for life. The terrestrial worlds remain sparse in our catalogs, but only because they are hard to see. We know of some like the Trappist-1 system, but so far we have not seen another Earth. In other words, if there are other Earths out there, we still to this day do not have a lot going on technologically to be able to see them. But we can think of further ways we can look, and aliens may have done that and seen Earth. They may know about us and that may change the equation of whether they might come here. Give our civilization another million years of general stability, imagine the scientific instruments we will have for looking at alien worlds. But for aliens to actually be here, that's another question. Crossing the vast distances of space also requires a vast amount of time one way or another. There are ways around this, such as if you don't care about the passage of time. It's hard to envision a biological species wishing to do this, mainly because few on Earth would want to invest the rest of their lives for an interstellar flight with no end, with likely only their progeny reaching the end. That changes, however, if you live for 100,000 years. Then spending centuries in a starship doesn't seem as bad, if boring. It might even be a safer existence, in a way, if you think about it. Not much way to get run over by a bus on a generational starship. But with intelligent alien machines, all of this falls to the wayside. Machines do not care about the passage of time. If they keep working, then they are functionally immortal. And if they can replicate and self-repair, then the paradigm changes entirely from the biological to the machine. But not entirely. If you think about it, the idea of machine replication is not unlike that of a cell or even a virus. That is the idea of the von Neumann self-replicating probe. All it really needs to be is a 3D printer, and when it gets to its destination, it could harvest the raw materials of a star system, and then build the invasion fleet on the spot. It could even construct fully intelligent biological troops. Perhaps the machines eventually become the masters of biology, and the processes of evolution, and all that we know as human and biological falls to the wayside. But back to the alien plans, or our plans, if we ever want to invade a world. How to conceal this is relatively easy. Make your invasion fleet relatively small, and don't emit any signals that the target can pick up. 
just sitting dormant in a star system as big as the solar system is effectively functioning as a needle in a haystack. If something were out there in the Kuiper Belt, it's quite unlikely we would just happen to see it until it was too late. Indeed, we know so little and have found so few objects and done so little searching that we can't even rule out that there aren't any further planets out there that may be larger than Earth. That said, anything that far out that can't just jump to relativistic speeds is going to take a while to get here, and it may become visible well before it gets here. Even at the speed of light, something like Pluto is an average of 4.67 light hours away. But chances are anything trying to accelerate to that speed in the solar system is highly unlikely. You're probably going to need a great distance and a large amount of time to do it. Then you have to stop once you get there. So short of forming or using wormholes or some speculative means of faster than light travel, we may actually have some warning if such a thing were going to occur. But within that, there is the question of how a malevolent alien civilization, or a peaceful one just watching us, would even know we were here. Planet Earth is one story. Its biosphere has been identifiable for billions of years from a distance. And with sufficient telescope size and technology, then yes, much of the galaxy would know about this planet. But much beyond about 100 light years, the time we've been emitting technological signals, our civilization simply becomes invisible. And even within that radius, we have not emitted many signals that could be reasonably picked up. Often in sci-fi, the emissions of planet Earth are depicted to be powerful enough to make it at least a light year. In the case of Contact, with the 1936 Olympics broadcast of Adolf Hitler. But the fact is, that was closed circuit television, and not many people outside of Berlin would have seen that. Saturn did not, much less beyond it. Likewise, most of our signals are just very weak and get weaker with distance. So there are only a few ways we can be loud enough to reasonably hear from afar. In other words, radar and the Arecibo signal, which are spurious one-off signals to an alien. But most of our day-to-day -day stuff, no. If you're close, as in inside the solar system, you would hear a lot, however. But aliens may be capable of very large-scale astronomical observations. If they put a detector, for example, at the focus point of their star's gravitational lens, then they could ostensibly see nearby exoplanets down to the level of 10 or so kilometers, well enough to spot large, sprawling cities, their lighting, atmospheric technosignatures, and so on. But again, to see us, it would need to be inside that more or less 100 light year radius. Outside it, it's not likely they would spot a pre-industrial civilization, but there are some wild cards. One of these would be close stellar encounters. We had such an encounter with Schultz's star about 70,000 years ago, but that was only one of a great many past encounters, most of which we will never even know happened. During that time, if one of those stars had possessed an alien civilization, they could have observed Earth or even visited it and at that great distance in time, there isn't likely to be any preserved evidence left of such a thing. I find that disconcerting in a way. We cannot ever rule out that alien feet, or whatever they might have, once set foot on this world. We could confirm it with the discovery of an artifact on the moon or something like that, but we can't ever discount it. Of course, there are spooky scenarios here. If we were to be around during such a stellar encounter, and these things take thousands of years to unfold, and we saw that the oncoming star had a planet that appeared habitable, or more, it was exhibiting technosignatures. What would we do? Would we attempt to create some kind of planetary defense system to hopefully avoid any invasion that may come? Scary thought. Maybe close stellar encounters are how interstellar wars start. You see them coming, you arm, they do the same, and then contact. But at the same time, it's a lot easier conquering the galaxy from the comfort of home waiting for stars to pass than it is sending out a galactic invasion fleet. But that may solve the Fermi paradox in that interstellar space travel on large scales is just too difficult to do, and no one does it. Rather, they sit and wait like vipers, maintaining silence, and even trying to conceal their home worlds until they wait long enough for another star with a suitable planet for colonization to pass nearby 
and then they strike. Interestingly, this scenario gets past a major stumbling block against alien invasions. Earth isn't likely to be rare. The universe is made of much of the same materials everywhere, and Earth isn't particularly rich in anything extremely rare. They'd be better off mining the nearest asteroids themselves, or terraforming other worlds, than they would traveling across space. And it has to be said that Earth probably would have been invaded if aliens were land grabbers. But if civilizations only come into conflict during close stellar encounters, then the equation changes, and planets like Earth could become very valuable and worth invading because you're not going to see very many like it passing by, at least not regularly. But no one ever seems to have done this, thankfully. Another problem with cosmic visibility is that there are only a few ways to really see and characterize a planet like Earth, and a major one is the transit method. A planet passes in front of its parent star and not only dips the star's light, but also the star's light passes through the atmosphere of the exoplanet in question, and you can glean clues about its atmospheric makeup. The reality is only about one half of 1% 1 of stars in the Milky Way can actually see Earth transit, however, perhaps offering some measure of stealth. Or so we hope. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently eyeing the other star suspiciously. It's very spooky to think about this, but getting invaded by aliens may simply be a matter of the stars that pass by you. And maybe the right one hasn't passed us yet. Not good. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.